Hi, I'm Richard, Richard McAllister from Capistrano Volkswagen in San Juan Capistrano, California, and I'm here to show you the new 2012 Beetle, the all-new Beetle. This one is the turbo version, which of course is like the GTI is to the Golf. This has the same type of engine and transmission and everything. Let's kind of do a walk around here. As you can see, they've made it lower, longer, and wider than la the last generation, the ones from 98 until 2010. They've made it a little more aggressive looking. It actually sits on a different chassis, which is, I think it's four inches longer and a few inches wider. A uh, lot more room in this car than the last generation uh, Beetle. It's got, even though it's one inch lower, it actually has more headroom, particularly in the back. They've taken the older style, which was more like three circles, having to do with the fenders and the top hump, and they've mushed everything back a little bit. This is more retro, actually, because this is the same silhouette as the older Beetle, like the 64 Beetle. First of all, I'd like to show you the really nice 18-inch wheels that they have on the turbo. This is the, the base turbo, and these wheels are standard on it. 18-inch wheels with the black painted sections and the, uh, the aluminum here. I think these look a lot like the, the wheels from like the late 70s and early 70s Porsche 911s. Really nice. Inside here, you'll see that there's red painted brake calipers, and they're not just red painted brakes, they're actually made by Brembo. Even though it doesn't say Brembo all over them, because that actually, you have to pay more <laughs> if it has that. But they're actually really nice Brembo brakes. Here on the side, on the turbo, this section here, this little overhang panel, is black with chrome. Also, the side view mirrors are black with chrome on the turbo. On the non-turbo, the mirrors and the side piece there are body colored. The turbo beetle has a wing here in the back. That's standard on the turbo. Doesn't come on the regular five cylinder, normally aspirated car, but uh, it's really nice because it's kind of black on the top and body color underneath here. The tail lights here, Although they look kind of different, they are actually very retro. The designer of this Beetle took the original taillights from the 64 Beetle, which were kind of a, an arc on top and flat on the bottom. He took those and turned them 90 degrees down here to make this type of taillight. This is how you open it. You actually press the top of the logo here and then lift with your four fingers right here. You, it actually has 15.4 cubic feet of trunk space. That's actually almost the same size as the Jetta trunk space. The Jetta has a huge trunk and it's 15.5 cubic feet. This is 15.4 cubic feet. And of course, you have all the normal things that you can do with a hatchback. You just pop out your little cover right here. You can also fold down the back seats. You just push this little lever forward and do a split fold. They go down fairly flat. There's actually something in the back seat there preventing it from going down, but you have a nice split fold. The previous model just had a single fold down, so this is a lot more user-friendly. It's a, it's a lot more combinable with your loads and, and different people. Let me show you under the hood. Lever right there, and then the secondary lever, secondary latch is right here in the front. Right in the center, you just push over to the right. It has the same TSI, or turbo straight injection engine that the GTI has. This is the same 2.0 turbo straight injection engine that is used in the GTI, the EOS, the CC, the Tiguan, the Audi A3, A4, entry-level A5, and the TT. So it's a very well 
used engine, as in it's it's been tested over and over and over again. Very amazing. It's an amazing engine. It produces 200 horsepower and 207 pounds feet of torque. Really gets you up and moving. And of course, you've got all of your little things. This is actually right here is the cold air scoop for the turbo. Your battery is up here insulated outside of a crumple zone so that it will stay intact in case you're in one of those accidents. That does a couple things. It makes it so that there's not acid spraying everywhere if you're in an accident, but it also keeps the battery in, in, intact and supplying power to the car in an accident because the Beetle has, and all Volkswagens have, intelligent crash response system. That means that if you're in an accident where the airbags deploy, the car automatically shuts off the fuel system, unlocks the doors, turns on the interior light so you can see, and turns on your hazard blinker so people can see you. And all of that is accomplished by having power to the system, which is another why, reason why that's up away from the crumple zone. Right here, of course, is your engine dips, oil dipstick and the engine oil filler. This is actually the oil filter. That's your coolant and your windshield washer fluid right there. And this is where the air cleaner goes, the, the main air box, and then back up here is your brake fluid. There is no power steering fluid because it's electromechanical power steering. It's actually electric and mechanical. There's no hydraulics in it. It actually makes for quicker and more responsive power assisted steering. The interior of the all new Beetle is also very retro. They've done a lot of stuff like the original dashboard of the original Beetle was very flat. So they've echoed that here. They've added what they're calling the Beetle Box, or in German they call it the Kiffer Feck or something like that. You pull it up this way. This is like the original glove box in the original Beetles. And then they've also added normal glove boxes, like this one, big glove box, uh, like you find in every modern car. And, but they actually have a third glove box over here on the driver's side. Driver's side glove box right here. So you can squirrel away, I don't know, gloves or your iPod, or it's not your iPod, but your iPhone or your phone or whatever right over here because you never have to touch your phone because it's connected by Bluetooth. More on that here in a minute. The interior of the turbo is black here, they call it piano black or gloss black. And then the dashboard is this carbon fiber look. It's not actual carbon fiber, but it's a really nice carbon fiber look. On the non-turbo Beetles, this whole area, the dashboard and the sides of the doors is body color. So if it's a red car, it's gonna be red. Blue car is gonna be blue, yellow car, yellow, of course. The turbo, comes with, this is the basic turbo, the, the first trim level, comes with a really nice stereo that is AM, FM, and CD, and auxiliary jack, and iPod. Let me show you a couple of things here. Right now I've got plugged into here the cable, which is for your iPod. If I take out my iPod, plug it right into here, comes up, it says media in, then you just put that away in your glove box so you don't have to worry about it, charges your iPod, press media, and it goes to either CD or media in, which is that one over there, and then it plays whatever the last song is that you were playing. I happen to be playing an old Yaz song right here. It gives you your options such as mixing, whatever that folder is, repeating, seeing the info. Browse is the button that most people will want to see the most. That gives you the ability to go up a folder on your iPod or go up to the top folder. So for instance, if you hit top, you get your playlists, your artists, your albums, your songs, 
podcasts, all that sort of thing. And you can just go in and say, I want to go in and see the artists. You can either just play all or you can hit open. And then you can go through all of your different artists here. So let's say you wanted to hear something by Baltimore, which right here, Tarzan Boy was their big single. So I'm going to open that and then just play. So as you can see, you can go into your entire iPod directory without having to pull out your iPod, taking your eyes off the road and going through everything. It's a safety thing as well as a, as a convenience thing. The car also comes with Bluetooth hands-free connectivity to your cell phone. I'm going to show you how to synchronize your cell phone. First, up here, this little set of buttons, this button that has the Bluetooth symbol on it, I press that once. That makes the car, the Bluetooth of the car, visible for the next three minutes. So then I'm going to go into my phone and go to Settings, and I'm going to go into General and Bluetooth. Right now, it's finding it. That's the one that it found, VW Phone. I'm going to touch that. And then it's going to ask for a pin, which is four zeros. And I'm going to pair my phone. Now I'm connected. Okay. Now I can just take my phone. I can put it away in the glove box or in the driver's side glove box. I can even, if it's an iPhone, for instance, I can even plug it in and keep the car, keep the phone charged while I'm driving around. Now that we've connected our phone, it will always, the car will always look for your phone every time you start the car. So you don't ever have to go through that setup procedure again. This is how you would make a call on the Bluetooth system. Your phone is just away, you put it away somewhere, and you press the push to talk button up here. Main menu. Help. Help. To call a contact, say for example, call John Smith at home. You can also say, dial number, redial, music, or further options. To stop the dialogue at any time, say cancel. Cancel. So, for example, I just said help because I didn't want to really make a call. But you can say call so-and-so. However the name is listed in your phone, you just say, I want to call this person. And the telephone, the Bluetooth system actually will understand you. It's very good at voice recognition. And so you say call John Smith at home. If you just say call John Smith and there you have multiple phone numbers, it would say, do you want to call John Smith on mobile phone or on home phone. You can also actually stream music via Bluetooth. And so you heard her say music was one of the options. You can say music and it will start playing. And then you could actually push it again and say something like next track or that kind of thing. Here in the dashboard right here in the center is your full featured trip computer. Over here on the stock on the right, are a couple of buttons here up and down and then one underneath here that you use to control the trip computer. So for instance right now it is set on the speedometer. Going up and down you can do things like the little circle with the line is your average. So for instance this is average miles per hour that you drove on your last trip. And since we've been sitting here it's going down and down and down. This is how many miles we drove on our last trip how many miles we have of fuel, the average miles per gallon that we did on our last trip, which we've just been kind of sitting here. So of course that's going down. This is your instant miles per gallon. So as you're driving, it will tell you every second how many miles per gallon you're getting and how long you've been driving. That's your trip timer, uh, the outside temperature, the coolant temperature. And this is kind of a fun thing. This is your speed warning. You can set it to be a certain speed. Say, for example, you uh, are always getting tickets going over 80 miles an hour. If you set your speed warning to 80 miles an hour, it will give you a friendly bing and flash 80 miles an hour when you're speeding 
to, you know, kind of help you control yourself because this is a very fun car. Some general things that you get on the Beetle. It's not, even though this is kind of the basic turbo, it's by no means stripped down. You still get cruise control over here on this stock here. You, of course, get air conditioning and heated seats. So your heated seats are right here. You, this is the passenger side, high, medium, low, off. High, medium, low, off for the driver's side. The heated seats aren't just the base of the seat either. It goes all the way up the back to pretty much your shoulder blades. This turbo Beetle has the optional DSG or automatic transmission. DSG stands for direct shift gearbox. It is actually an automated manual transmission. So it's like a manual transmission that shifts itself. It has a dual clutch. Down here on the shifter, you'll see that it says DSG. When you put it into regular drive mode, it's a, you know, a, a nice fuel economical vehicle and pretty fun if you romp on it. You can also pull back to S, which is sport mode. That makes the accelerator pedal a little bit more lively. It also raises the RPMs higher before it shifts and keeps them higher to give you a more spirited drive. If you go from drive and push over to the right, you'll see that the plus and minus are now highlighted. You can shift yourself. You shift up by pressing forward and shift down by pulling backward. When you do that, in the dashboard, you'll see right here where there's a little one up in the corner. That is the gear that you are in. So for instance, when I shift back over to drive, it says D. When I shift down into sport mode, it says S. But then when I'm in the manual transmission, it shows you what gear you're in. I can't shift right now because we're not moving, but that would uh, indicate which gear you are in. All Beetles come with an internal ambient lighting system. The lights around this, this little spot right here, this white strip around the speaker, as well as up here underneath this, there are LED lights that come on at night when your lights are on. Right up here, this little roller switch will change the lights to be either red, blue, white, or off. The previous Beetle, the one generation before this, was notorious for having poor headroom and rear seat legroom. That has been totally redesigned and changed in this new Beetle. I am six foot two, and I can just pull the seat forward very easily, pop in the back seat, and you'll notice I actually have plenty of headroom. It used to be that when you would shut the hatch, you would have to tell your rear seat passengers to kind of duck a little bit. Now, not at all. Pull the seat back. And this seat is set up for me for driving, and yet I have plenty of room here in the back seat. Another one of those little retro touches is the strap with all the little lines and everything. This is exactly the same type of strap that they used in the original Beetle for your backseat passengers, for both while you're driving and also for being able to enter and exit the back seat. They've done a really nice job on the engine noise of this car. It's got the nice throaty growl of the 2.0 turbo, but it seems like they've almost enhanced it a little bit with the intake manifold or something. When you're just driving normally, just driving along the freeway, it's very quiet. But then when you kind of lean in on the accelerator, it has a really nice deep throaty growl to it. has a really excellent turning radius. And 
and this flat bottom steering wheel is really nice. It's very sporty, leather wrapped, really nice feel to it. It's not too big, not too small. We're inside the dealership now, inside the showroom, in a normally aspirated, the non-turbo, 2.5 liter, five cylinder Beetle. This one is a Beetle with sound and navigation. Sound means that it has the new Fender, Fender the guitar people, sound system, eight speaker stereo with a subwoofer, as well as navigation in this one. So this one's a little bit more upscale. What you get with that are, you get a few different things. So for instance, first looking at the dashboard, here in the center you get a little bit higher end trip computer. And you, instead of interacting with things on the stock over here, you interact with buttons here on the steering wheel. Along with these buttons, you also get over here on the left, buttons for your stereo volume. You can go track to track on your iPod or stereo or uh, CD or also on your presets. You can go preset to preset on the radio. And then your Bluetooth buttons are moved from the roof liner to the steering wheel. So you've got an answer button and then your push to talk button right here on the steering wheel. As you can see, this one has a body colored dashboard. Like I said, earlier, the body color dashboard is on the normally aspirated Beetle, not the Turbo. The Turbo has the carbon fiber and the blue, I'm, I'm sorry, and the black. Here we have the navigation system. This is the called the RNS 315, which is the navigation system in the Beetle and the Jetta and some of the Passats and some of the Gulfs. As you can see, I have plugged in my iPod again, and here you can interact a little bit differently with the menus on your iPod. So for instance, I'm going to press the button here or here to list what I've got. It has defaulted to my songs menu. I can, of course, just scroll through all the songs and play what I want that way, or I can go up a menu to my albums, artists, playlists, that sort of thing. If I want to go into my artists, I press the little button here, go into Baltimore again, and the Tarzan Boy single, and play. Once you get above the base model, the, the basic Beatles, you get a couple of other nice little features added. So for instance, in this one, it has the keyless entry and push button start. So to start the car, you just hold down the brake and press the start stop button. That also makes it so that you don't ever have to pull the key out of your pocket. You never have to press the buttons to unlock anything and you really only never have to open the key because the key simply has to be inside the car to start it or next to the car to unlock the doors. There are sensors in the door handle to lock and unlock the car. You also get a really nice armrest right here which you can adjust to different heights just depending on what, what height you want. You reset it by lifting it all the way up. It also has a nice storage piece right in here. The navigation system right here, you press the nav button right here. This brings up your interface for entering in an address or intersection, your destinations, where you want to go. It's also touch screen. So if you want to, if you know that you want a point of interest, you can just touch the magnifying glass. You can do a search on a particular name 
punch it in here, or if I hit the back button, let's say I just want to know where, what restaurants are around here, and it will pull up the 30 closest restaurants to me. So let's say I want to go to Ricardo's Place, which is a little Mexican restaurant here in San Juan Capistrano. I can either look at the details so that I can make sure this is the one I want, what address it is, or if I just want to go there, I just touch right there. The route is being calculated. And the lady in the dashboard. The destination is in the displayed direction. Tells you where to go. You can see that the blue line is telling me where I need to turn. To zoom in and out, you can turn this knob the nice thing about this nav system is you can set it up to do auto zooming, which means that the faster you go on the road, it will zoom out like this for you automatically to show you what's coming up. As you slow down, it zooms back in to show you more detail. It's also flash based, flash RAM based rather than a hard drive. So it's a very quick navigation system. Up here, if you touch this little, the north button, it will switch to 2D with north being the up direction, or if you touch it again, it will be 2D with direction of travel being up. Touch it a third time, it goes back to the 3D. This Beetle has the sound option, which means it's got the new Fender sound system in it. Here in the trunk, is the big fender. It says basement on here, but this is the subwoofer. It's over here tucked over in the corner, so it doesn't take up much room, but it gives a really nice, full, rich bass sound to the entire stereo system. The whole idea behind the Fender sound system, Volkswagen uh, teamed up with Fender, Fender guitars and amplifiers. They wanted to come up with the feeling of being at a concert. And so many sound systems, many high-end stereo systems, just kind of surround you and kind of push the sound to the back of the car. They wanted to have the idea, the feeling of being at a concert so the music comes from the front of the car more than the back. Thank you for watching my all-access tour of the all-new 2012 Beetle. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was informative. If you'd like to contact me, my name is Richard McAllister. I work at Capistrano Volkswagen in San Juan Capistrano. My phone number, direct, is 949-234-4220. And my email is rmcallister at capovw.com. Thanks again.